اوكي بدي بلش بس بسؤال في فيلم ميكرز معنا اليوم بس فيكم ترفعوا ايدكم بس وينكم اوكي ام سوري ام غانا بي سبيكين ان انجلش كيز اي فيل مور كومفورتبل سو اي هوب يو بير وذ مي فيرست اي وانت ريكوجنايز one thing that unifies us right now at this moment. And this one thing is our breath. We're all, we're all breathing, right? We're all breathing, right? There's no one suffocating, okay. This one act that unifies us, which is the breath, is the basic structure of our human nature, right? And this breath is going through a cycle, and we're here breathing that same air. And this air is going through me, it's going through you. So we are connected. But now, humanity has drifted so far away from this. And we can't see this common ground between us. Because humanity achieved a great advancement in inhumanity. And we're going in that direction constantly. We're not stopping. So we're becoming more inhuman than human. And we can see this in ourselves, right? We're disconnected from ourselves. And this is part one of collaboration. You gotta collaborate with yourself first. Understand who you are and where you are at this present moment. In this present moment, right now here in this room, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be a speaker if there's no you as a listener. And the other way around, So we complete each other. And this completion makes us one. Oneness. This is the first step, right? So for me as an artist, I want to make art that touches you. I don't want to defend the cause, and I don't want to talk about my people, because all humans are my people. I don't have people of mine, right? We're all humans. And I don't want to be a judge, and I don't want to be a policeman. I don't want to be you, and I don't want to take stands. I want to be me. I want to be me as an artist. And I want to create art that resonates with your senses. And you will perceive this as an audience, because I made every effort as an artist to get you there. And this is exactly what makes me an artist. And this is what makes you my audience. Yesterday, I watched the film by Zena Dakash. I don't know how many of you were here. And I was extremely touched. I actually cried. <laughs> so I kept thinking about this. Where am I from that film? And how was she able to get into my soul and make me feel this way? She touched something in me that was so strong, and I was missing this. And this is the experience that you want to take when you're watching art, a film or any kind of art, right? This is, this is what makes art. And now I ask myself, why do we make art? And why do we make films? Because I'm a filmmaker. And why do you want to tell stories? This why keeps popping up all the time throughout my process while I'm working. And this why, which is this magical W, this existential W that keeps going with you throughout your process. And it actually leads you to inspiration. And it should be your guide to inspiration. You gotta ask yourself why you're making this art, why you're making this film, why you're telling this story. Now, for me as a writer, I, I found a way to understand where to get my inspiration from. Each one is different. I'm sure each one gets their inspiration from a certain place. But I found that there are two ways for me to find inspiration to create art. The first one is to trigger the awakening. How many of you are familiar with the word koan? K-O-A-N. Anyone? 
Wow. Okay. So the koan, it's, it's a paradoxical question that's asked by the master to its student in the Zen practice. And this question is supposed to provoke the great doubt and to assess the student's attainment in the Zen practice, to see where they are. So a koan would be something like, what's the sound of one hand clapping? Or what's your face like before you were born? Or if a tree falls in a forest and there's no one to hear it, would it make a sound? It sounds so illogical, right? The questions, like what is the answer? You don't need to know the answer because that's the exercise that the Zen master is practicing on his students. He wants them to abandon thinking, to abandon thinking completely and to tap into their intuitive senses and to start thinking without thinking, which is great. <laughs> you have it, man, come on. You've been like intuitively doing things here all the time. <laughs> so from that part, you go to trusting the intuition. In order for you to trigger that awakening, you got to trust the intuition, because that's what the master wanted from his students, first of all, to get them to abandon thinking and to let go and, and, and just launch their intuition. And why are we always afraid of our intuition? Because we're born as kids, the child is born, right? The first thing he does is he knows where the food comes from and he knows how to move his lips on his mom's nipple. So nobody told this child what to do. So intuition is there from the very beginning. It's part of our function. It's part of us. So, so being afraid of it is not really logical. Especially because intuition is part of the autonomic nervous system, which is responsible for our heartbeats, breathing, digestive system. All these are in the autonomic nervous system. You're not aware of them. They're functioning, right? You're not asking yourself all the time, am I breathing or digesting my food? It's happening on its own. So all you need to do is to let go for your intuition to come to surface. And that's my way of writing. I let myself go and I write. Then the next day I wake up and ask myself, who wrote this? So that's the moment where I understand that I experienced my intuition. I experienced this part of myself. Now comes the rational thinking. Because you need that part once you're starting to work on your art. You need to think rationally after some phase. But you got to go through the intuition part in order for you to get to the rational thinking part. So during the rational thinking, you get there and you use it when you have the idea, when you have formed that idea during that intuitive phase. So you form that idea, and now you start thinking rationally of how to develop that idea. The idea. When I first started thinking about this, how to approach collaboration, I first thought that definitely it starts with an idea. You gotta have an idea to you know, collaborate with people. And that idea must have an objective. And that objective should lead us to the macro shift. Now, we all want to change the world as artists, and I know that. But changing the world has been happening all the time, with you personally here or not. So you are a small element of this process, and you got to recognize how small you are in this global process. So, so saying that, you got to know that your job as an artist is to actually maybe have a micro shift first to think about maybe changing one person's perception or one person's way of thinking, of make somebody question a certain principle that has been governing their life. So when you do that, I think you've already collaborated with the globe to make a change. 
And that's a micro change that if everybody's doing it, it will become a macro change, a, a macro shift, right? That's what actually happened to me yesterday. Something changed in me when I watched that film. And I think Zena did a wonderful job to make me think about something or question some things that were not really on my surface. Now, going from the idea to the macro shift, I thought about a pattern that might be helpful. And this is the pattern that I thought about. We start with the idea, and the idea becomes a story. Then we communicate the story, because story is not a story if it's not being told. So you communicate the story with the other. And when you do that, you are connecting with the other. You are creating this connection. And this connection will become a collective behavior, right? Because now you're all behaving under this one connection that you created for, for both of you, or as many as you are in that collective. So this collective behavior is governed now by the collective consciousness that is formed. And this collective consciousness could not be there if it's not built on trust. Well, nothing of this will be there if it's not built on trust. So once you do that, once you trust the other, because you originally connected with them, so you trust them. Trust is an act of equality. So because you recognize this other person's qualities, you're equal, because you're both bringing something to this table. So you've got to break the ego complex, which is the next one. So you break the ego complex. And after that, you're now creating an intellectual solidarity, because you think that you are now collect collectively intelligent. And this is the collective intelligence that's created in this collective. Now, then, you're experiencing evolution. Evolution of the idea, of the self, and the other. Once that evolution is experienced on that level of the idea and self and other, you're going to make a collective impact. And that collective impact will be transmitted to the global brain, which is the brain that governs all of us, which is this network that is connecting all of us together. And then the macro shift happens. So if you go through this pattern, I think you'll be able to, to check off your list if collaboration is functioning or dysfunctioning. So collaboration dysfunction could be because of these elements. There's no common vision, there's no leadership, and there's no collective problem solving between these people. So you go back to that pattern and you see where along the road you were not connecting. And then you ask yourself, why? And then the W comes again. So why did that happen? And then you will figure out why this collaboration is not functioning. You will stop at a certain point and feel like, OK, yes, here, this is what, where something went wrong. For me, as a screenwriter, when do I start to think of collaborating with people? Because I'm a screenwriter and a film director. So I take my script and direct it. When do I start a collaboration? When do I bring people to work with me? At which stage? I write a lot, and I do a lot of drafts and a lot of revisions before sharing my content with anybody. And I only share it when I think it's great. That's when I feel there's a problem, because I'm seeing that there's no problem. So I share it with others, and they read it. Uh, others could be anyone, really, like anyone could be your other reader. As long as this person is giving you constructive feedback and telling you what they think about what you've done, because you think it's great. So they will bring in something new to the table, and, and you will understand that you still can work on this material. And it's not over. The process of writing is never over, especially in screenwriting. You keep writing until your film is going to the distributor. Because when you're editing your film, you're writing. And, and when you're directing your film, you're writing. So all the time, you're making these calls that the writer makes most of the time. So here, I want to get into this. 
In 2010, um, I, I've been living in the States for a very long time, and um, I got disconnected from the Middle East, and I only came to Lebanon when I wanted to see family. And I didn't have any friends or anything. So in 2010, I decided to go to Lebanon because I wrote a movie that I want to shoot there. <coughs> and I get there and I started to meet people, filmmakers and other fellow filmmakers and friends and friends of friends. And we started to talk about filmmaking and to share ideas. And some kind of trust was happening, and I started reading other people's screenplays that they were going to be made soon. And I figured out that most of the scripts that I was reading were really weak. And I was wondering, how are they going to shoot this next week? Like, what's going on? Have you read this? Like, have you get, I mean, did you give this to someone to tell you that this is great? You haven't. And that's why it's, it's really weak. You can't just go shoot this. You gotta you got just slow down. So I was surprised. And I'm not here saying that we lack ideas. I'm just saying that we have ideas, but we don't have stories. Because we don't know how to put these stories together. And here I'm really talking about film. That's why I ask if there are filmmakers. So they will connect with this much more. Um, so we do have ideas. But the stories are lacking. And that's why there's a very big weakness in Arab cinema, in my opinion. I don't know if you agree with me. But I think we're seeing a lot of films that are under underdeveloped as stories. That's why we're not really connecting with them as much, because they're really not speaking to us. They're kind of far. And here, here is what I thought about. First thing is, Screenwriting programs and tutoring for technical proficiency is almost non-existent. And if it exists, it's theoretical rather than hands-on. So people are not really practicing how to, to make this art form. They're just being told things out of the book. And this doesn't work that way. You can't be a screenwriter if you don't practice this. And the other problem is the blockbuster invasion. Because these filmmakers, young or not, they're all the time bombarded by blockbuster movies. So they're not given any material that has a quality. This quality that would make you inspired to do something that resonates with you. So from there, I created something after an experience that I had in 2010 where I called my friend, who is the founder of the Outbox Film Festival in Lebanon, and I told her, listen, Sonia, I want to make, I want to do a screenwriting workshop. So let's try to collaborate and do something. So it's like, yeah, let's do it. So I went there, and I did this workshop for about 20 people, 20 filmmakers. Some of them came in with a script. Some of them came in with a treatment, a developed idea. Some of them came in with no idea whatsoever. They didn't even know <laughs> what screenwriting is about. So each one left the workshop with something. Some of them, the ones who came in with a script, left with a completely different way of looking at their scripts. And all this because they were inspired by how to collaborate with other people and make them read your material and to tell you if it's working or not, before it gets on screen, you know? Because that moment, you can't do anything about it. That's it, it's over. It's out there, you're gonna be crying all the time because of those mistakes. But some of these mistakes can be fixed if you just work on the script. So after that experience, I thought something must be done on a bigger scale. On a bigger scale. So I created the Cinephilia Screenwriting Lab for Shorts. And that lab um, has been running since uh, January 2013. And it's been touring in the Middle East. And in this lab, we select six filmmakers. They come in with an idea or a developed treatment or even a first draft of their script. And they live together for an intensive week 
where they share ideas, they read their scripts, and they comment on everybody's work. So by doing this practice, they become more of a script doctor than just a screen, screenwriter themselves. And this is very essential. So from there, we started going to places like Cairo twice, Beirut four times, Tunis, Amman, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Kuwait, Alexandria, where we were this summer. And we bring in uh, filmmakers who are local to, to discuss with those filmmakers about their issues, where they are, what they need. And you can see here, Ahmed Abdullah. I don't know if you were guys here on Khalid's talk the first day. So this is Ahmed Abdullah. And he's such a sweetheart. Um, so this, this kind of round table that we created for filmmakers has been quite helpful, I think, because that's what filmmakers are telling me, that they are, they are now all experiencing um, a new phase in their career. And most of them went to film school, and they tell me that they did not learn in film school. They learned theory. They did not really do the work. They, they never sat down and wrote a script. They graduated, they paid such a big amount of money, and they don't even know how to write a script. And their, their degree says bachelor, <laughs> bachelor of Screenwriting. So this is quite embarrassing. And I've seen this in all these cities, not just in Lebanon. So I'm gonna show you here a video. Um, it's about five minutes. It's a sneak peek from one of our labs that happened in Beirut um, a few months ago. All right, can you play video? You ready? Okay. Yeah. Interior lobby night. Fata in her mid-thirties, wearing a red coat, sitting in the lobby of her workspace, smoking her cigarette, drinking whiskey from her glass, using her iPad, while listening to the song Dead Famous by Diagram of the Heart. After a few seconds, Rabia, the technical, screamed at her from inside the room. <laughs> كيف كان نهاري؟ خبرين أكيد أنا معك أوكي أوكي رانا بعرف هو آه ما بعرف هو من أي نوع يعني صبيان كتير بس أنا بنصح هيك تجربة تزي إيه لا ما تعمل بلوك على فيسبوك <تصفيق> The most striking thing is the excellent dialogue. 
Okay. That yeah. is a really good diet. It's a really good diet. Uh, I can really get a feel of who she is just uh, description just by the music she listens to and the way she talks. Mm. Um, I like the structure, but has it come in and know uh, uh, there's something there's something that that needs a bit tightening come in, build confrontation come in. We need to feel you know she's leaving a six year old career. So mm. there, there needs to be a very strong and clear motivation to let her know how to do this thing. Yeah, for sure. We need to put a bit of a drama to that. Hmm. We're talking about the fact that the thing is that there are more lower angles to that, but the lower angles are on the side, so it's not that bad. Okay. Hmm. This thing is not that bad. I feel that your your secondary characters lack a bit of characterization, mm. which you can you kind of get away with with Arabic and that, but with you can't. So. لانه هي اللي حت she's gonna trigger her to quit so she's a very important secondary character فلازم لازم اول شيء تفكر مين هي هيدا المره شو بتعمل شو بتعمل بنهاره ليه بتكون فاضيه من بساعة عشرة كل يوم تسمعها ليه هالقد is she psycho تتقعد تسجل كل شيء بتقوله وتقعد تسجل سيرة تبعت لي مين هي هيدا المخلوقة كبير بس اعطيها اكثر layers أنا ما عندها فهم عندها نحنا ما شفنا على أتى إلا مع ربيع مبدئيا وماشي بالإزاء وعم تعمل هيك بس. Oh to me it's clear what she's doing. She has a side character. Her character is already mean to everyone. بس في شغلة يمكن فيك تستعملها. بالعالم بشو بتصير؟ ضل هابي أفهم. هابي 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 هابي. Well done Nadi. Very well done. I'm sure. Well done. Okay so بهيدا اللاب انا فتت مع فكره كان صار لي شهرين فكره بعدها براسي يعني ماشي سطر وصرت على اللاب بجمعه قدرت يكون عندي فيرست درافت بشي كثير منيح انه حسيت بالايفولوشن تبعي وما كانت ايفولوشن بطيئه ابدا يعني لانه ريتم كثير سريع وما عندك وقت كثير انه ايه اقعد افكر وهيك اقعد اخذ جمعه بريك لا كنت انه بدي اكتب لازم اكتب على طول هيدا انا هون صرت بالبروجي يعني انا اليوم بخلص من اللاب بسيناريو مش ريتي تو شوت بس سيناريو فيني اقعد كل جمعه كل جمعتين اقعد ركز عليه وظبط فيه اي نو انه بعد شهرين بعد شهر ونص شهرين رح يكون عندي شيء ماتيريال ريتي تو شوت اي نو انه كثير رح اكتبه للسيناريو وان داي بس مع اللاب كتبته ات هابنز يعني عن جد كثير حبيت لانه اول شيء هذا الشيء بشجع كثير عالم في كثير عالم عندهم مشاريع وهالمشاريع كلهم بجروا كلنا عندنا افكار كل يوم بدنا نعمل افلام وكل شيء بس هون يعني يو فيل يو كان ميك ات يعني في ستركتور معينه انه عن جد تقدر تحقق هالحلم انه تعمل الفيلم حبيت كثير لانه في برين ستورمينج بيصير مع دارين مع التلاميذ وكل واحد جاي من باك جراوند كل واحد جاي معه قصه فهيدا الشيء كثير بي كيف بيقولوا سا انريشي ليكسبيريونس سوري انا بفرجي ثانك يو شي مينز اتس ان انريشينج اكسبيريونس جاست تو ترانسليت Now, after the lab is over, um, we select one person to give them the best screenplay award, not right after the lab, after two months of the lab is over. And uh, this, this award is that we finance and produce the film of that filmmaker. So here are our winners from 2013, uh, from four, four winners. Uh, for recipients of the award. And one of them, we've already made her film, and uh, I'm just gonna show you the trailer, it's really quick. Can we play the video, please? I'm going to the phone from the phone. What's wrong with you? Why not? What are you talking about? We're going to get this one. We're going to get this one. This is the one. إذا كان الزبون طلبها اكسترا بتحضر عنه فهمت؟ بدي مصرياتي شو قلت؟ تعييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييييي
that's my manifesto of all this, is to create a film smart mob that will contribute to a movement in this art form where stories are not just personal, but they are the reflection of the other. Only by sharing knowledge, learning, and building solidarity, we evolve. Thank you. Let's stay connected.